Well, we're live again. This is session two of four on Hangouts on Air in the presentation series. And in this section, we're going to talk about several issues. We're going to talk about the lighting. We're going to talk about the cameras. We're going to talk about the audio elements and the issues you encounter with these elements and how you can work around some of those issues. When we're talking about participating or watching a presentation, you really have several choices or several options associated with this. We can watch these video presentations through Google Plus, or we can watch it via YouTube, or we can watch it through a YouTube Live page. If you choose, we can embed a player in your particular website. Depending on where you watch it, you have different features available. For example, with Google Plus, we can schedule a presentation for days or weeks in advance, and we have the ability to set up for question and answer sessions. With YouTube, we don't have that same capability. With a YouTube page, it's fly by the seat of your pants because you can't get the URL to pass out until usually about 30 minutes prior to actual production. So you have to have a channel up the whole time in order to get this going. With YouTube Live, we can again provide advanced notifications, so that's a plus, but we can no longer allow for live question and answers. We can only do comments, and those comments are semi-real time. They're not, there's a little bit of delay there if you happen to be watching or streaming in a real-time environment. And obviously, you don't have that capability in an embedded player on your website. So of the four choices, the best choice for a live presentation with interaction from the audience is the first choice, that is to use a Google Plus page. There are several roles associated with Hangouts on Air session. The first of those roles is as a moderator or a moderator slash panelist, think of them as a host, that originates the Hangouts on Air session so that other participants can use full application functionality. This means that the moderator invites everyone else, sets everything up, and actually this is the individual that's going to mute other folks to keep things going and keep things rolling smoothly. Sometimes we'll have a social media monitor, and that's a person who's going to present audience questions to the panelists or to the host of the presentation. By the way, moderators and panelists and social media folks add up to a maximum of 10 individuals. The audience or viewing audience is unlimited. They can stream, and it's, a, it's actually being streamed from YouTube servers. We have no limitations on those folks. In terms of panelists, we're concerned with production production of the video is what we're talking about here. And you have to be aware of your surroundings and keep the audience and other panelists in mind when you're doing this. The biggest issue that we typically run into is with audio problems. Audio feedback and background noise are the biggest single issue during a broadcast. So this is one of the things that we look at in a pre-production environment. We want to make sure that the audio is clean. So we'll typically have the panelists join a presentation a little or a session a little early so that we can make sure that it's clean. The feedback is usually generated because of feedback between the built-in microphone and speakers on your computer, tablet, cell phone, whatever. Second trigger for the issue is two folks connected to the conference call in the same room. So you hear echoing between them and over time it builds up to a squeal. So the recommendation in that environment is use a standalone microphone and headset or earbuds when you're not on site in the video conference room. What that does is that isolates the echoing problem. Good audio is the single most important component of an effective video conference. The other thing that we look for you to do is minimize the background noise and mute your microphone when you're not the active presenter. So if you're sitting in on a business meeting from a remote location, you should be muted except when you have something pertinent to say. 
in addition to dealing with the sound issues or audio issues, lighting is somewhat of an issue. You want to be well lit. That doesn't mean lit up in terms of drinking. That means that your, your face should be well lit. And to do that, you want an even distribution of light. And you're trying to avoid shadows. The ideal solution is to use three-point lighting. And that's been around forever. It call, they're called key lights, fill lights, and back lights. Typically, if you're looking at a camera that's producing a video conference, the key light will be off at a 45 degree angle from the camera facing towards you as a participant. And that provides your primary lighting source. The fill lights sits on the opposite side of the camera in a 45 degree angle. It's a little bit dimmer and it provides more definition. And the backlight is typically above and behind you. By having three light sources, you get depth of field and you don't have a lot of shadows. The other thing that you have to look for is glare. You want to avoid glare. Now you can use the camera in the laptop, in the tablet, even in a smartphone. Uh, most of them are, are fairly reasonable. The smartphone sometimes is a little questionable. Or if you choose, you can have an external camera. A good example of an external camera is a Logitech C920. It provides you more flexibility because you're not tied to a specific screen. And that camera also might be a better, is a better solution for seminar type presentations because you're not looking at a particular screen or what you're doing is looking as you want a shot of a presenter. What I'm showing you here is a typical hangout on air presentation. What you see as a presenter, as a host, uh, as a guest in terms of the screen. You don't see a clean screen. You'll see information at the top. You see these blocks. And what they tell you is they tell you, one, are you connected? That's this red button. That's how you hang up from the video conference. Two, or the second element that's shown to the right of that, the second element tells me what microphone I'm using, what camera I'm using, basically how am I set up. The third element which looks like bandwidth, is just that. Am I using a small screen display? Is this a, have I requested an HD display? Is it very low speed? Is it possibly voice only? I have those capabilities. The next two elements allow me to turn off my camera. And when I turn off my camera, by the way, I also turn off my microphone or turn off my microphone alone. And the final element is where I actually invite people to participate. You'll see when we go through the setup that you have several places where you can invite folks in. That's inviting them into view. This is where you invite them to, to set up. We also have over here, we have something called enhanced. And what enhanced refers to in this case is the screen display. There's several setups and when you use one of these, you're just going to have to go for the best picture by clicking through the five or six options that are there. It'll change from situation to situation. In the picture you see here, my lighting was not three-point lighting. I only had two lights available, one basically directly above the camera, or and the camera happens to be embedded in a computer, and a second one behind and above, but out of sight. You'll also notice an area in the right corner here that has a window in it. So in the daylight, I have to focus or point my camera away from that area because it creates quite a bit of glare. The other thing that I want to mention here are the applications, which we'll talk about in the third section. This, these are the applications that we use with Hangouts on Air. They're internal to the Hangout on Air session. So basically, that's the audio elements and the issues that we run into. Next, we'll talk about the applications in our third segment. The idea is to keep this as reasonably timed as possible, and this is the easiest way to do it, is break it up into smaller segments. So I'm going to end this session, and we'll start the third session. We'll see you there.